Welcome to Stetson Law Live, an online, interactive, informational event for prospective and admitted students of Stetson University College of Law. On today's program, Laura Zappo. Felicia McCaster. Our topic today, your 1L class schedule. Everyone, welcome. We are so excited that you guys are taking the time to join us today for a chat with our wonderful registrar, Felicia McCaster. For those of you I haven't met yet, I'm Laura Zuppo, the Assistant Dean of Strategic Enrollment Management here at Stetson. I am excited to welcome you all in just a little bit of a time some of you on Saturday for part-time orientation and others next Tuesday and Wednesday for full-time orientation. Um, I'm going to take a few seconds here to ask Ms. McCaster to please introduce herself. Um, and maybe Felicia, you could tell us a little bit about your background, where you come from, and, and how you found yourself at Stetson. Hello, well, hello everyone. My name is Felicia McCaster. I am the registrar here. Um, I am a long way from home. I moved here from, from St. Louis, but I'm originally from Arkansas. I've been at Stetson University College of Law for eight years, but I've been doing this for over 17 years. I love what I do. Um, I also wanted to just throw the names of my staff out there because th I am not a one-man show. I have an excellent staff, so I have Deb Bartles. She's been with the university over 30 years, um, Ms. Patricia Stone, and Mr. Corey Smith. Um, just a little bit about what we do in the office. Um, we manage course schedules, registration. We, the way I like to describe it is admissions office does a wonderful job of recruiting the wonderful students that will be starting at the beginning of the year. And then what I do is I sort of put my nurture hat on and I sort of take them over and we then try to take you from where she's brought you all the way to graduation. Mm -hmm. So we do a great job of trying to make sure that we keep you on track with your curriculum. Um, there's also something that I wanted to mention, you know, oftentimes if you feel that because Laura's probably done a great job and her staff of, you know, holding your hand from getting from point A to point B, then classes start. And you're probably thinking, well, what do I do now? I always referred or relied on Ms. Zuppo and her wonderful staff. I want you to also know that you can come to the registrar's office and if whatever it is that you have going on, if we can't, if we can't fix it, we'll try to make sure that we get you to the right department. That's right. One of the things that we, we love and, it, and it's, um, we call it the stuff and family and yes. and it sets us apart in the sense that you, you you work with us in admissions and aid and then we introduce you to this really amazing team that's going to take a personal interest in your lives and your goals and your journey and so that's why we're doing this session for you today um, entering students have a lot of questions about their schedule about courses about upper levels uh, schedules and courses and so this is your chance to get to know Miss McCaster and ask the hard questions. Ask the questions about um, about you know how we come up with the schedule and um, about when they bid or register for second year. So let's kick it off, and I am ready for you guys to start typing questions because as your questions show up, I will ask them. Um, and if the topic strays, that's not a problem. We will we will field these questions masterfully. All right, so. One of the most frequently asked questions um, that we get from students is, why is the schedule set the way it is for 1Ls? I mean, what, what's the theory behind it? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Is it the same for everywhere, every law school? It's pretty much the same in most law schools. The way, our our full-time faculty here have pre-selected your foundational courses, and those courses are pretty much the ABA and for the state of Florida, the Florida Bar tested foundational courses. I was laughing with a professor earlier this week when we were talking about 
the selection of these courses because I made the comment about you. I said, you know, I was watching this segment of Law and Order and when they started chiming off CIPRO and research and writing and I was like, <laughs> wait a minute, why, you know, why are they taking the same courses? So I talked to her about that and she said, no, those courses are pretty much the same foundation. It doesn't matter what state you live in. So again, just remember those are your foundational courses that will get you through to your electives. Oh, Cheyenne, thank you for kicking us off with our first question of the session. Cheyenne has a great question. Is there a way for me to see who will be in my classes? That's really interesting. I don't know that they can, can they? Hi, Cheyenne, and thanks for that question. Um, let me think about this for a minute. We're gonna throw a curveball now yeah, and again. Cheyenne, Watch out. I'm gonna have you're gonna need to come to my office once classes <laughs> start. I'm not sure that the students can see everyone in their in their block according to the things that I set up. So how about that something that I'll have to go back and research and I'll yeah. be able to get back with you yeah, and you yeah, can follow up yeah. with, with Cheyenne. And Cheyenne, you know, one of the really neat things that we do is with um, Hattersink, you've been on there, there's an opportunity to dialogue with each other. A lot of our students do that. They get on Facebook and they say, hey, I'm in section one, I'm in two, I'm in three, I'm a part-timer. And people will start just posting um, what section they're in, what profs they have, and um, that's how a lot of people begin to get to know each other. And also, for those of you coming to our event Monday night, the 14th in Gulfport, it's mm -hmm. the welcome reception. I'm sure Ms. McCaster will be there. Yes, I you will. You can say hi, give her a big old mom hug, <laughs> and then <laughs> that's what I feel like. I'm a mom of hundreds of students. Right. Um, and then what we can you can do is just start talking with everyone and saying, hey, what section are you in? And it really starts to build bonds. I see that the students are, are really bonded in their section and they, they, they kind of, um, they form really good friendships. So one thing you and I were talking about before we started was mm -hmm. the second semester 1L year. There's something different that Stetson does. Can you tell everybody about that? I love it and I know the students do as well. So of course, your first year courses were already pre-selected for you unfortunately and in the spring the same thing however your research and writing section you will be able to bid and we'll talk about bidding and what mm -hmm. that means but you'll be able to bid for that particular class yourself and the reason why it's a little different from other schools is because they will be offering um, research and writing with special topics such as international law social justice environmental law um, just to name a few and there's I think there are a couple of others I haven't finished that schedule yet, but just to name a few, that's the piece that as a first year student, you'll have a little bit control over your research and writing section in the spring. So that is something that Stetson does that a lot of other law schools don't do. And I think it's really helpful for somebody who's thinking about pursuing a certificate of concentration in advocacy, correct. international, elder, um, environmental. So, hey, we had a great question from Bridget. Bridget, Thank you for asking this. Um, how are the students assigned to different orientation days? Was it random? And I can answer that. Um, frankly, we start off via alpha. Yeah, because <laughs> full-timers, it's you know two days of full-time orientation. So we start off alpha. Part-timers, your weekend. Um, sometimes full-timers tell us that they had a prior commitment, so they might do the 16th instead of the 15th, et cetera. But we really try to keep it um, uh, Dean Bryant in the um, Student Affairs Office really tries to keep it so that it's um, an equal number of people attending orientation. It doesn't correspond with your three sections for courses, it's totally separate. And that's where I thought you were going with that question. <laughs> yeah. Um, and actually, Shana has a question. This is great. You guys are doing well. Um, who do I contact if I have a conflict with one of my assigned courses? <laughs> yes, that would be me. <laughs> Tee that so, one up. <laughs> if you do have a conflict with one of your sections, go. Um, I don't know if they have my contact information. They don't, yet. but maybe we can type it up. Carmen's going to go ahead and get that on the screen. Thank you. So yes, you'll reach out to me because we do want to try to resolve that before the first day of classes. Okay, so Carmen's going to go ahead and get um, Felicia's email on Thank there. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Um, Carmen. Should we do the Registrar's Office Utility Account? Yes. Okay, so we'll do Reg. Okay. All right, next question. What? And this takes us a little bit into some upper levels, which is cool. fun. Kayla, thank you. When can we start picking our own classes, and how many options are there for electives? And 
is the curriculum mostly set for the three years? It's a lot of great stuff in one. I let, who was that, Kayla? Kayla. Thank you, Kayla. So, yes, um, we'll stop holding your hand as much after you complete your first year. And as far as the electives go, what I really suggest you do is we have this tool on the website called the Navigator. I don't know if we have the opportunity to have that come up on the screen, but what that tool does is if you have an idea of the area of law that you're interested in, if you go to the navigator, it will start pointing you towards the courses that you want to take. And it also um, lists the professors that teach those courses. That way, if you're still uncertain, you can reach out to those professors and, and, and schedule a meeting with them, and then they'll help you try to decide if that's the direction you want to go or if there's something, another path you'd like to take. But I highly recommend going out and looking at the navigator. Don't stress so much over it your first year. Trust me, you're going to have a lot on your plate your first year, but going into in your spring semester, when you're really ready to start trying to think about what you want to do and what area of law you want to take, start going out and looking at the navigator and, and reach out to my office. You know, we can set you over to um, Academic Success. You know, they're a great um, tool. So we can send you over there, but there's many people on this campus that's willing to help you. I think um, I agree, and I think that the um, navigator, I think some folks call it pathways, so you might hear it used interchangeably. Mm -hmm. Pathways or navigator, the Stetson navigator. Um, it's a really amazing tool, and, and I know you had a lot to do with building that. It's fantastic. So we have a couple of other great questions. Are all of our classes for the first semester with the same people? Well, yeah. Don't you want to get used to your family? So <laughs> what will happen is, Every, and you can tell what section you're in if you go out and look at your schedule for the larger classes. So I would say every course excluding research and writing, you're either going to see a 01, 02, or 03. That number designates the section that you're in. So you're going to be married to that cohort or that family in your fall and spring semester. So go ahead and get comfortable with your classmates and, and get to know one another because you're going to be together for a long time. <laughs> for a full year. That's, that's it's, it's very true. And Diallo, um, actually, uh, Felicia answered your question about how do we know which section. If you're still having problems, just let somebody know. You can always email us at lawadmit at law, and we can, we can help clarify that and for you, And make sure that you see a schedule out there. You know, yes. if, if for whatever reason you're trying to log on and you don't see your courses posted, please make sure you reach out to my office or admissions so that we can make sure that if there is a problem, that we can resolve that so that you can um, view your schedule. So for... The general doctrinal courses, mm -hmm. con law, civ pro, they're they're going to be what? So, you know, between 70 to 80 people for yes. full time, about 37 for part time. How many people are in the R and W classes? Is that I mean, how many sections? Usually, just half of we that. We have uh, eight sections. Okay. Um, this fall and spring. And, but the numbers do vary. Some sections will have close to 30 and some will have maybe 20. Wow, that's the small. The reason why you may see a difference in the number is not because that professor was just lucky and they are <laughs> just... <laughs> It's possible that that professor, say for instance, Professor Picard may have a smaller number because she's also teaching the international research and writing class. And those are all papers that those professors have to grade. So that's why you may see a smaller JD enrollment number for her, but she also has another course on for her for that semester. Thank you. That's really helpful. And Brian has a good question about assignments. That's always one of the most frequently asked questions, so thank you for asking. So Brian says, when should we expect assignments um, to be posted for the various classes, and where do they find them? You, they will find that in my stats, and so once you log in, that information will be available to you. I do think faculty support may email some of the students according to the class section that you're in, but I always suggest going out into my stats and looking at your schedule first. Thank you. Jordan, I see you have a question about bringing someone with you to orientation. Orientation is just for the students. <laughs> Your family members need to stay at home. They are welcome to come to our welcome reception on Monday evening, August 14th, 5 to 7 p.m. here in Gulfport. Um, but please do not bring anyone with you to orientation, but make sure you show up early, on time, early, do not be late, and wear a suit. This is business professional. This isn't blazer and khakis, gentlemen. 
Ladies, this isn't mini skirt time. This is business professional. You will get a lovely photo taken of you that will haunt you for the rest of your lives. Yes. That's how we refer to our alumni. We look at your 1L shots. All right, Becky has a question. How many students are in the entire incoming 1L class? Um, Becky, we are looking at 37 full-time students and about 230 to 233, uh, did I say that backwards? 37 part-time <laughs> students and 233-ish, let's just say, um, full-time students. And we also have two students who are coming in who are foreign educated attorneys and they will be part of the 1L JD class, and they are already experienced practitioners from other countries. It's really exciting. Yes, it is. Um, okay, we have a couple more questions. Um, Roxy Washington, hey Roxy, um, she says, I hear that class offerings are made well in advance up to two years. For planning, is that true? So how does a student plan which electives they're going to take? How do they find out, you know, when things will be offered and how far in advance can they kind of plan their, their educational journey? Well, realistically, it's about a year, okay. you know, so we know that we can try to get the schedule set for one year in advance. So um, the students are able to plan plan that two years we have not been able to master that one yet it we're working on it but we're just not there yet <laughs> but if a student says if a student wants to take I don't know trust in estates can they say hey Miss McCaster is trust in estates something that's offered every year every other year when's that typically offered? what we try to do with that is we have a listing of courses that I know that I'm going to rotate in between the fall and the spring so you may not see a schedule set per se but you'll be able to see the listing of the courses so that you'll know that I'm planning to offer them. That's really helpful. So hopefully yeah. that will at least be a helpful tool. No, that's really helpful, especially if you're interested in something, you know, like an elective and, you know, I don't know, uh, sports law or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you know, that's interesting that you say sports law because, you know, students, you have some power here as well. You know, if you're looking at the curriculum because we have, we'll have a full schedule out on, a dr on, on the grid, but then we just may have a listing of courses. And if you're interested in something and you see it on our catalog, but you don't see that it, we're, I'm planning to offer it, you know, shoot me an email. Let me know that, you know, you came to SETS and then you, you were really interested in trying to take a particular course. So, you know, make sure that you send me an email on that as well, because I do want to make sure that we're meeting your needs. Good. Thank you. That's really, that's pretty neat to know. Okay. Kayla, real quick, what is the dress code for the welcome reception? Business casual, sundresses are fine, that kind of thing. Shorts, guys, that's fine, whatever. All right, we have a couple of other items that we think are pretty important to talk about today. Um, there's something um, that everyone needs to know about, and it's actually that law school has an attendance requirement. And I really would like Ms. McCaster to shed some light on that because students, you ha it's not like undergrad, so I, I want you all to pay attention to this one. Thank you for that question, Laura, and please listen, for those of you out there, please listen carefully. Um, we have an ad drop term, so there's like days that we're in ad drop. However, this isn't your ad drop from undergrad. You know in undergrad you get ad drop and there's no financial penalty, there's none of that. None of that takes place until, you know, after ad drop. Here at the law school, the first day of your classes, attendance starts. So, and there's really not a excused absence. So what we do with that is we gift you 20% of your absences that you can, they're, they're yours. You can miss up to 20% of that, of the class. However, when I say that, oftentimes students are like, oh, yes, I can start uh, writing down the days that I want to go to the <laughs> beach, you know, and it is not going to affect me. But then what happens if you go past your 20 and then you get ill? Mm -hmm. That's right. You've already exhausted your 20% that you were permitted or you were allowed. And what happens is once you exceed your 20%, you're now exempt from sitting for the final exam. So all, what I want to say is I'm not trying to say that to scare you. I'm saying it because it's factual, and I want you to be aware of how you spend your absences. So if, if you know that you're going to be in class all the time, but you miss here or there, you know, that's fine. But if you start seeing a pattern, or with that being said, if something's going on with you, if life is happening or you're just feeling overwhelmed, 
please reach out and let us know because I always say this, there are probably some things that we can do when we find out ahead of time than waiting until the end of, of the semester and there's nothing that we can do because the action's already taken, you've already overcut, you can't sit for your exam, now you have to take that class over again. So with regard to attendance, just know that you have 20%, that, that that's yours, but just make sure that you manage it accordingly. I think that's an important point, everybody. Um, we've seen it year over year that something happens. I always say this, life is predictably unpredictable. We have students who have deaths in the family, they have, they've been in accidents, something's happened. If you, if you start being absent early on, then you could potentially throw your whole first year off because you've had an emergency. So please attend your classes. All right, on a, on a fun note. Yes, um, let's yay, go fun that. note. <laughs> okay. Um, so we have Blair. Blair, good question. This is a, another frequently asked question. The academic calendar says that the start of the semester is Saturday the 19th. Mm -hmm. What, you know, what's going on with that? So what that really means, why I do that is because we're on a 13-week academic calendar. So every time I try to schedule our start of school on a Monday, in a fall semester, that has us going through Thanksgiving and then coming back and taking a couple of classes. And no one, <laughs> no one wants to do that. When you break for Thanksgiving, only thing you want to do is come back, take your final exam, and then get on out of here and enjoy your Christmas break. So when you see a Saturday start, is because as we were going through, you have to encounter the holidays. You know, you have to think of all of those things. So when I'm going through and I'm trying to work on the um, the semester academic calendar that's why you'll see a Saturday start date and but there are some classes that we do schedule on Saturday as well so you know you have to take that in, into account as well not any of your first year courses but there are some electives that uh, are scheduled on a Saturday so just to make sure you guys all heard that 1L's Part-timers, full-timers, you all start on Monday the 21st. Yes, you do. Okay, Ryan, you have a question here about textbooks and R&W. And I know that some professors are actually already emailing you guys. I know Professor Podgore has emailed both of her criminal law sections. So if you haven't checked your Stetson accounts, time for you to start looking at your emails. Um, but Ryan has a question about textbooks, and he says, Research and writing has no assigned textbooks according to the bookstore online. Do And will the workshops use the same textbooks as the research and writing course? I don't know the answer to that. I don't know how that works. I, they do, and, and you're right. There is no textbook um, for research and writing. So your first day that you go into the class with your professor, they're going to provide you with what it is that you need. Okay. And so for um, the rest of the students, and that was actually something we had talked about, where can they learn which books they will need for the fall? That's also listed on the bookstore's website. Okay. Um, yeah. And is it by section? Isn't that correct? They yes. can look up their section. If they know they're in section one, the bookstore will have their books for section one, section two, section three, that or That, and they also have it by professor. By so professor. you can kind okay. of double check to make sure that you have the right book. Okay. Good. All right. For those of you who haven't gotten your books yet, um, I do encourage you to take a look and start um, get your sections. Go check out our bookstore online or come here and look. Um, our bookstore lets you rent books. You can buy used books. You can get the information and see if you can find them online. Etc. And um, can I say yes. something about books? books so, yes. um, something that's important to note: if you're planning to do an ebook, an electronic mm. book, I would recommend you reaching out to the professor to make sure that that's not going to cause an issue down the road when it comes to your final exam. Um, professors have a, we use ExamSoft at, um, at Stetson, and they have the ability to set up how they want the, the, the exam to be, whether it's closed book, open book, or partial. So if you're using an ebook and say your professor is planning to schedule his exam where he is going to allow the usage of the textbook, but he is not going to allow internet access, you want to make sure that you guys talk about that and address it on, on the front end so that if there's something that can be resolved, we can fix it on the front end. Good. Thank you. And you know, one of the things that um, students want to know on a regular basis is about how do they know when it's time to, to help 
or time to uh, start bidding or registering for upper levels. What are some of the services or programs that we offer as a college of law to the students to help educate about that? Oh, we have this excellent, excellent. It's um, the academic advising session. And we have so many departments, faculty, the concentration. We have so many people that have bought into this event. And it's really turned into this real huge event. So in the spring is when you'll want to start thinking about it. And you really want to attend the academic advising section in the spring semester because that's when you'll be bidding for your classes for if you go to summer, for summer, and especially for the fall semester. But I, I love that event. You know, I bring my staff out and what we also do is we we look at what you've accomplished up to that point but we also pull your degree audit up and we sort of walk you through because you know we've set your courses for you your first year so now you're probably like you've got the deer in the headlights look well, well okay they did all that for me now now what do mm -hmm. I do so you've got your navigator as a tool you have all of the wonderful staff and administrators and faculty here to assist you but just know that you can also come to the academic advising and we can sit down with you and you if you have an idea of what your area of interest is we can go through that with you but you'll also have faculty members concentration there's so many people that attend that event so I ask that you please start attending the academic advising sessions we have one in the fall semester but you'll want to attend because you will want to know how to bid for your one class that you'll have for r and w but what's more important is that you attend in the spring because then you'll be setting your entire schedule for the fall okay we have three questions just came in so we're going to wrap it we're going to speed through these like speed okay. dating right so Rapid really what file. she's saying is I need to slow down. I need to just hurry up and say what I need to say, keep it moving. Well, <laughs> I wasn't going to say it like that. <laughs> All right, so real quick, should we bring our classes today, asked Morgan. I mean, should we bring our books to class every day, asked Morgan. That's between you and your professor. All right, so you're yeah. going to ask that question, Morgan. Okay, and Carmen Johnson is in the background saying, yes, bring your books every day. Okay, <laughs> so you heard it. All right, next one. Jenna, how are final exams scheduled, especially for part-time students like, like she is? Um, does each exam occur at the same time or day as the regular course, or is it entirely different? It does not occur as the same day as your class was, but if you're in the part-time program, you don't ever have to worry about trying, you know, taking a class in the day. So all of the part-time classes, are the, the exams are scheduled in the evening. And um, the exam schedule is always advertise the same time that the course schedule is so it's you don't have to sit back and wonder and worry you know well I've built my schedule but I don't know when my final exam is going to be so when we release the course schedule the final exam schedule is released at the same time and where can they find that I love to send people to um, Stetson Connect because we've built this one site. It's called Registration 101, and it just sort of morphed into this huge thing. You know, it started out okay. just, let's just send them there about registration. But a lot of the things that I've talked about today on how to bid, the other information that you've asked me about, all of that information is listed on Stetson Connect. And I see that part hasn't come up yet, but if you click on your student tab, you'll see the registrar link. And then once you click on the registrar link, that's the first thing that opens up. It's a green little button that says Registration 101. You'll see Professor Bauer walking you through the navigation. She told me to be quiet. No, you're no, no. good. You're fine. She's this is really cool. Up, but you'll see the <laughs> Professor Bauer talking about and walking you through the navigator I think we have professor Boudreaux and a couple of other professors some talking about concentration things so you're not going to remember all of the things that we've talked about today but a lot of many and they're short they're short clips probably shorter than how long it's been taking me to talk to you today <laughs> but there are many clips that will that will walk you through the answers that you're trying to get to you can tell we have fun don't you guys aren't you excited about this it's not as scary as people think it is all right and I think we're gonna take our final question from Kayla will you graduate early if you take summer classes every year Kayla I believe you are a full-time student so can you graduate in two and a half years yes you can okay yes you can you have to and there are a lot of uh 
if this, then that, then exactly. you will work out directly with the registrar's exactly. office so if that is it's something It's not you just about the credits. Right. You know, so yes, you can. But if you work with our office, we would do our best to make sure that you meet all of the other goals because you have residency requirements, you have classroom credit. There are a lot of other things that you have to take into account other than just meeting your 88 credit hours. And so that's why I would always welcome you to, um, to come to the registrar's office. And so before she mm -hmm. shuts my mic off, one of the things that I also wanted to say is something we're going to do new <laughs> this semester is we're bringing in a popcorn machine in our oh. office, and I, you know, it's going to be periodically when you smell popcorn down the hallway. We're we're out the double doors from the business office. Maybe I'll do it when you guys are in there trying to pick up checks or whatever. But mm -hmm. anyway, we're going to be providing free popcorn for the students just because it's one of our little ways of trying to give back and just to say thank you or for waiting for you to come in and say hello. I think we all know that free food draws <laughs> students in. So uh, on that note, um, everybody, awesome questions. I cannot wait to see you all here as part of the community. We had a whole bunch of other stuff in case you weren't as chatty, but you were, and that makes it more fun for us. So thanks again for your participation. Um, we look forward to seeing you and um, keep in touch if you have questions. And that's it. Have Thank a great you. day. Thank you for watching Stetson Law Live. For your convenience, our contact information will remain on screen for the next few minutes. Thanks for watching. We look forward to seeing you soon.